Hello, I'm Glenn Onifer with Apple Product and Technology Training. In this audio tape, we're going to discuss several soon-to-be-announced products which enhance Macintosh connectivity to IBM's AS400 mid-range computer systems. First, we'll explore a bit of background on the AS400 product line. We'll talk about the market that the IBM mid-range products address. We'll then explore the currently available SNAPS products from Apple and look at the enhancements being added to address AS400 connectivity using SNAPS, plus a change in the way SNAPS products are packaged. And finally, we'll discuss third-party products available today that work in conjunction with SNAPS gateways. First, a little history. In the mid-1960s, IBM was the dominant computer company in the world and found itself embroiled in several antitrust lawsuits from its smaller competitors. IBM was also facing a new challenge from companies such as Digital Equipment Corporation and Hewlett Packard, who had created a new class of machines called mini computers. They were smaller and cheaper than mainframes and were more oriented toward interactive processing than the batch oriented IBM mainframe machines of the day. In an effort to provide some relief from the antitrust suits, and also to address the growing challenge from DEC and HP, IBM split its computing businesses into two divisions, one oriented toward mainframes and one responsible for the emerging mini-computer marketplace. This is the mini-computer division that was called the General Systems Division, and GSD was given a free reign to develop a class of computing machines different from the mainframe machines. GSD developed a new computing model around a small, inexpensive processor. The General Systems Division introduced its first mid-range product in the summer of 1969. The IBM System 3 family did satisfy two major elements that the competition had been successful with, a small footprint and relatively low cost. However, the System 3 was still a punch card, batch-oriented machine. The mini-computer market continued to evolve, with DEC and HP putting the emphasis on interactive computing by supporting dumb terminal devices like Digital's VT52, the forerunner of the popular VT100 ASCII terminal. To address this, IBM created the System 32, their first interactive mini using a single data entry display terminal. The market marched on, and so did IBM with the System 34 in 1977, supporting eight interactive users. In 1978, the System 38 was introduced. It expanded interactive support to 256 users. The 38 also introduced a new architecture compared to the other machines of this class and was optimized for interactive application development. The System 38 sold reasonably well, and there are over 35,000 System 38s still in use. IBM introduced the System 36 in 1983 which was more like the old System 32 and System 34s. Although the 32 and 34 are no longer sold, the 36 continues to be marketed as the bottom end of the mid-range product line. It has been renamed the AS Entry System and sells in significant numbers. About 110,000 AS Entry Systems have been sold since 1988. Independently creating a separate product line to address the mid-range market had its disadvantages. It has resulted in two completely different architectures from a major computer systems manufacturer. IBM created a situation where the mainframe line and the mid-range line had incompatible applications, databases, operating systems, and communications hardware. IBM was losing market share to companies like Digital who offered a uniform, scalable architecture across their product line. IBM attempted to make their mainframe architecture more scalable with a machine called a 9370. It was a low-end mainframe in the same price range as the System 36 and the System 38. Worldwide, IBM sold only 5,000 low-end 9370s. In the meantime, IBM's mid-range market share continued to deteriorate. IBM attempted to patch up the product line by offering communications paths between the mainframes and the mid-range. The introduction of LU-62, also known as Advanced Program-to-Program -program Communications, and the System Applications Architecture 
known as SAA, attempted to tie IBM's diverse product lines together, but the marketplace was still skeptical. Finally, the AS400, codenamed Silver Lake, was introduced in June 1988. The AS400 architecture was based on the System 38, but it is significantly enhanced. To protect customers with a significant investment in old 38 and 36 applications, software emulators became an important part of the AS400 strategy, giving the customer base a less painful migration path from those old architectures to the new AS400. The AS400 solved a lot of marketing problems for IBM. Its architecture is scalable, allowing a user to start small and grow into a mainframe class machine by simply adding more hardware. It contained text-based terminal emulators to allow 3270 users to use 525X-based applications and vice versa, giving a clumsy but much needed way to use different types of display devices on the network. It not only supported APPC, but went a step beyond with advanced program-to-program -program networking known as APPN. The heart of all this is the AS400's operating system. OS400 contains a list of standard features which makes the AS400 IBM's most sophisticated and accessible medium-to-large-scale platform. OS400 contains so many built-in features that it is not necessary to do extensive systems or applications integration common to mainframe operations. This is one of the primary reasons the AS400 is so popular. OS400 is sold with every AS400, and new releases are provided free of charge. The cost of a similar functionality on IBM's mainframe machines could be five to ten times higher. Let's run down the list of significant OS400 features. The file system features a built-in relational database with an interactive query capability and the availability of industry standard SQL access. OS 400 supports a rich set of communications capabilities, making it the most advanced communications platform in the IBM product line. It has many features that have yet to be offered on IBM's mainframe class machines. OS 400 operates with menu-driven screens to make system management and applications development a lot easier. OS 400 also has an extensive help facility, which can be accessed by hitting a single key. OS 400's architecture makes the AS 400 platform the most SAE compliant machine in the IBM product line. In the area of serviceability and support, OS 400 features dial-up hardware and software diagnostics, reporting, and patch capability. Access to the IBM Interactive Information Network is available at additional cost. The AS400 supports a wide variety of productivity enhancement software, such as Office Vision 400. This is an integrated word processing, electronic mail, calendar management, and document library service package. Third parties have written integrated software to support a variety of vertical integration services, such as inventory control, accounts payable and receivable, factory automation, point of sale systems, and bookkeeping systems. In fact, turnkey packages using the AS400 are one of the primary reasons users select this platform. At the end of 1991, 166,000 AS400 systems had been sold with prices ranging from about $20,000 to over $2 million. Although IBM made great strides in making the AS400 easy to use, it's still a text terminal based machine. There are several hundred commands and hundreds of screens a user must be familiar with to be productive on an AS400 machine using a text based terminal. One can see that integrating a superior desktop computer like the Macintosh into this class of systems is a major opportunity. And that's why we're here today, to discuss the new features of Apple Snap's products to facilitate the use of Macintosh computers on this important IBM computing platform. If you'd like to stop the tape now and take a break, go ahead. After this short interlude, we'll continue our discussion.
To discuss these new products, I'd like to introduce Dave Nash, Apple's Product Marketing Manager for IBM Connectivity Products. Welcome, David. Thanks, Glenn. It's a pleasure to be here. David, perhaps you could summarize why a customer would select an AS400 platform. Well, sure. The AS400 is very popular among small to medium-sized businesses, K-12 and higher education customers, as well as enterprise customers that currently use the System 36 and 38 platforms, typically in a distributed processing environment. As you mentioned earlier, integrated turnkey applications, such as point of sale and inventory control systems, are a major reason why companies choose the AS400 platform. Additionally, with the current wave of downsizing, or right-sizing, as some like to say, the AS400 is a viable platform to escape the cost of a mainframe, and it is becoming more popular in this regard. Interactive applications development, which allows dynamic customization of applications on the fly, substantially reduces turnaround in comparison to tradi traditional mainframe operations. This also results in lower stacking levels as it takes a lot less people to keep an AS400 operation going than it does a mainframe. The scalable architecture makes the AS400 cost effective. No reprogramming or porting to increase the size and scope of your AS400 applications. And the AS400 superior networking makes it an attractive choice for many companies. What kind of problems would a customer look to Apple to solve in an AS400 environment? Although it's more dynamic than a mainframe, it's still not as user-friendly as one would like. For example, using AS400 query can be quite intimidating for the novice. This is where the Macintosh offers a competitive advantage. The Macintosh can front-end a lot of the processes and applications using tools like clear access and data access language. The Macintosh can become a powerful desktop platform in this environment. Giving the user power of the AS400 within the context of the Macintosh desktop. What are the performance advantages of implementing Macintosh in an AS400 shop? Well, number one, improved productivity. With our new enhancements to the SNAPS product line, an AS400 user has access to all of the features of the system using a traditional 5255X terminal emulator and AS400 based printing. But our value doesn't stop there. We can insulate the user from the burden of sifting through dozens of AS400 panels to retrieve information from the database, as well as providing Macintosh front-ending of existing applications. Sounds very good, but there's a lot more to SNAPS than just mid-range connectivity. That's right. The SNAPS product line has been on the market for about a year and a half. It was originally developed to support Macintosh integration into the IBM mainframe environment providing such features as 3270 terminal emulation, file transfer, and 3287 printing. It is still the only product that offers an advanced program-to-program -program communications gateway, or APPC, between IBM products and the Macintosh and Apple Talk networks. SNAPS was designed to be a versatile connectivity architecture, hence our ability to enhance it for AS400 operations with relative ease. It was designed from the start to be a multifunctional IBM connectivity platform. In fact, there are a number of third-party products available today that will work with SNAPS gateways. That's right, David, and we'll be discussing them uh, a little later in this tape. But let's talk specifically about the enhancements that SNAPS has for the AS400. Okay, first of all, SNAPS for the AS400 contains a 525X terminal emulator. This is the preferred terminal emulator for the AS400 environment. It's got all the features you would expect from a Macintosh emulator. Display customizations such as colors and type size, support for a variety of languages, drag and drop keyboard remapping so that the function keys can be assigned to different functions on the AS400. It's also got an auto key feature that allows the recording and playback of keystrokes as well as the editing of those keystrokes once they've been recorded. And we also offer tear-off keypads so that you can design your own keypads and move them around the screen, as well as multiple session support. This works the same way as SNAPS 3270 does from a user perspective. That is the emulator talks with the gateway using Apple Talk, 
and the gateway communicates with the AS400 using either a serial SDLC line or a token ring connection at either 4 or 16 megabits per second. I noticed that you didn't mention twin axle cable connections. That's correct. There are excellent third-party twin axle solutions for the Macintosh. This is a market we didn't wish to address with this product. More and more users are interested in and implementing local area networking technologies, and this is the market that we're after with our gateway strategy. How about printing? We offer 3812 Model 1 printer emulation with this product. This works similarly to the 3287 emulator that's in our existing SNAPS 3270 product. A Macintosh sitting on an AppleTalk network becomes a print server and talks with the gateway using AppleTalk. The gateway is then attached via serial or SDLC line or with token ring to the AS400. All printing comes from the AS400 and is sent to the gateway, which then relays the print job to the server. The server then prints the output on a pre-selected laser writer or other Apple printer on the AppleTalk network. Now this is host-based printing, isn't it? Yes, that's right. You've got to remember that a lot of AS400 printers are of the impact variety. The AS400 generally doesn't generate the type of output we'd expect from a Macintosh or laser writer combination. What this is intended to do is to give the Macintosh user the same capability as a native AS400 user using a text-based terminal and a traditional line printer. Now, unlike a lot of the competitive products, we're using APPC to communicate with the host, are we not? That's true. Both the terminal emulator and the print server use LU 6.2 communications with the AS400. And currently, on the Macintosh platform, no one else supports that. What about file transfer? That's not part of the product at this time. We are looking at other ways of exchanging files in the AS400 environment that are more sophisticated than simple file transfer, so stay tuned. However, this doesn't mean you can't do file transfers today with third-party products. For example, XCOM 6.2 from Legion Corporation is a Macintosh application that not only supports simple file transfers, but it also allows you to queue up a series of file transfers and send them to a number of different destinations in an AS400 network. And because it uses APPC sessions, it significantly outperforms other PC file transfer methods. Also, with the data access language server for AS400, which we're now shipping, uh, not only can you do queries of AS400 databases, but you can also move entire AS400 tables to the Macintosh, which in an AS400 environment is in effect the same thing as a file transfer. How does our SNAPS for the AS400 product stack up with competition? It stacks up pretty well. You'll find our terminal emulator to be excellent. It's got all the features you would expect. It's got high performance, multiple sessions. Uh, it's as graphical as we can make it. And our print, our print architecture is very competitive as well. And by using a high performance file transfer package like XCOM 6.2, along with the DAL server for AS400, we feel we have a very competitive offering. But don't just look at terminal emulation, printing, and file transfer. Remember that the addition of data access language for the AS400 and add-on third-party products, such as both from Connectivite and Blacksmith from CEL, can really turn a, de a desktop Macintosh into a powerful and easy-to-use tool in this environment. A lot of folks are going to think this is PC support for the Macintosh. How do we position ourselves in response to that question? Let me say that this is not PC support for the Macintosh, but we are covering most of the major elements of PC support with this offering in combination with third-party products that use the SNAPS gateway. We've got the terminal emulator, the printing, and the file transfer. What we do not initially have is shared folders and some of the more obscure features of the PC support package. How about packaging and pricing? Well, there is an important change in the way that we charge for the SNAPS gateway with this product. We used to grant a license based on the number of LUs, or logical units, that could be configured when the gateway was being set up. As you know, you can have more than one terminal session operating on a single Macintosh. And in a 3270 environment, one terminal session was equal to one logical unit. Now, in the AS400 environment, 
something called parallel sessions are supported, meaning that a gateway could only have one logical unit and have large numbers, say 32 or 64, sessions connecting to it. So with this release, we'll change it and charge by the number of concurrently connected users, allowing a maximum number of users to connect to a gateway. So instead of 8, 32, and 64 LU gateways, we'll offer 10, 35, and 70 session gateways. So now these are individual Macintoshes. So we're kind of counting by the machine versus the number of terminal emulation windows you have active. Exactly, because a given user can have an infinite number of emulation sessions up to the limit of their memory, basically. I see. When and where will we announce these products? Snaps for the AS400 will be announced at an IBM client series announcement in New York City on February 16th. The client series is a program that IBM is putting together to focus on client server application packages and tools for the AS400 to personal computers. Excellent. What's a good way of qualifying a customer who has the potential to use these products? Well, I think you're looking for a customer who wants to get the most out of their investment in their AS400. The AS400 is very strong in its database capabilities, its networking, and its base of applications. Of course, the Macintosh being one of the best desktop computers has a lot of opportunity to get more value out of the, that AS400. So we've got a lot to offer as customers consider replacing terminal devices with desktop computers, replacing older MS-DOS PCs, or simply trying to make their AS400s easier to use. Well, thank you, David, for giving us the marketing insight on this product. It was a pleasure. If you'd like to stop the tape now and take a break, go ahead. After this short interlude, we'll continue our discussion. Next up, we have a discussion of third-party involvement in SNAPS technology with Mark Farland, evangelist for SNAPS. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Glenn. First off, perhaps we should discuss what third-party products are available for SNAPS customers. Okay. There's a good variety of SNAPS-compatible applications out there providing a wide range of functionality. Take, for example, Connectivite's Both. It's a quick and easy way to front-end 3270 and 5250 host applications with a graphical user interface. Another application that does front-ending is MitemView from Mitem Corporation. MitemView has the added strength of using HyperCard, SuperCard, or Fourth Dimension, adding more processing power to the front-ending application. We've also got terminal emulators that use SNAPS gateways. For example, Avatar's Mac Mainframe provides their popular 3270 emulator and file transfer application for the SNAPS environment. We've also got a 5250 terminal emulator with file transfer and front-ending tools in Andrew's token access product. Helios provides ASC 3270 and ASC 5250. These are terminal emulators that use the communications toolbox that works with SNAPS gateways, as well as 3270 over TCP IP connections. How about client-server development environments? Yes, we have several of those. Blacksmith from CEL Software can use HyperCard, Fourth Dimension, Omnis 7, ProGraph, C, Pascal, and others to create client-server applications. SQLink from Technosis provides relational database middleware for the Macintosh, as well as other PC platforms like DOS, Windows, Unix, and OS2 to interface with AS400s, System 390, RS6000, and OS2 databases. And speaking of databases, how about Information Access Vehicle from OnTech, which allows access to IMS, DB2, and flat files using SNAPS gateways. We've got mail gateways, like SoftSwitch's SNADS Microsoft Mail Gateway, using the APPC functionality of a SNAPS gateway to bridge SNADS and Microsoft Mail systems together. And finally, you've talked about file transfer before, so I'll remind everyone once again about Mac XCOM 6.2, a high-performance file transfer application from Legion Corporation, which uses SNAPS gateways and APPC. I understand there's also a software distribution package. That's right. It's called AMPM from Tangram Systems. 
It can distribute applications or any file through a SNAP's gateway. Let's talk a bit about current efforts underway for add-on products in the AS400 world for the SNAP's product line. Sure. What we've done is we've seeded developer versions of our 5250 software to several of the developers that we've already talked about in the mainframe world. Well, Mark, that about sums it up. Thanks for giving us the story on third-party products for the SNAPS environment. You're welcome. And that about wraps it up for our discussion about SNAPS products for the AS400. You'll be seeing more information coming out on these products as we get closer to shipping them. So keep an eye out for this important information. Have a good day. Dear Cassette Listener, you have now completed Side 1. Before listening to Side 2, please advance the tape to the end of the cassette. Thank you. with Apple Product and Technology Training. On this side of the audio tape, we are going to expand on some of the subjects you heard about on side one. We're going to start looking at the internals of the AS400, the architecture and operational characteristics of the SNAPS for AS400 product offering, integration issues, configuration issues, and what to keep in mind when installing these products. Let's start with the AS400 itself. The machine comes in three basic configurations. The smallest is the 9402, which can be ordered with up to 7,900 megabytes of disk storage and 40 megabytes of memory. The medium-sized 9404 can be ordered with up to 12,000 megabytes of disk storage and 80 megabytes of memory. The largest is the 9406, which can support 49,200 megabytes of disk storage and 512 megabytes of memory. All models use 48-bit virtual addressing. Communication support includes X21 dial-up and least line support in both asynchronous and synchronous formats, SDLC, IDLC, and X25, as well as Ethernet version 2 and 802.3, and of course, token ring. Attachment of coaxial base 525X devices using the 5394 and 5494 controllers and 3270 display stations using 3174s is also supported. 3270 to 5250 and 5250 to 3270 display station remapping is available for all displays. This provides across-the-board functionality as far as the terminal devices are concerned, but the keyboard mapping is clumsy at best. But the real impressive part of the AS400 is its operating system and internal architecture from a software perspective. The AS400 is IBM's most advanced communication platform because it's of its sophisticated implementation of advanced program-to-program -program communications, also known as LU62. More than peer-to-peer, point-to-point -peer, -point connections, the AS400 actually extends the architecture by implementing advanced program-to-program -program networking. That is, the ability to act as a router in a large AS400 network with dynamic address mapping and packet routing similar to what we see in large Apple Talk networks. Given the restrictive rules of the SNA protocols, this is quite a feat, and the AS400 is still the only IBM product that does this well. You'll find incomplete implementations of APPC and APPN on every other IBM platform. When it comes to peer-to-peer -peer networking, the AS400 does this best. Let's look closer at the internals of the AS400. Here to help us understand this is Richard Johnson from the Enterprise Systems Division Support and Training Group. Hello. The AS400 is the first IBM machine using a relational database for its file structure. Everything from systems to configuration files are stored in this database. The database dynamically spreads records across all AS400 disk drives fragmenting the physical files to 
to optimize performance and load sharing. It is possible to restrict the movement of physical data across volumes using storage pools. And although this is a physical convenience, it can have an effect on the performance of the relational database as a whole. The operating system treats all files as objects. Global and user libraries contain members, which are the actual files themselves. Members contain records, and records contain fields. Each file is defined using a data description specification known as DDS, or a utility called IDDU, which stands for Interactive Data Description Utility, or an optional package that uses industry standard structured query language, SQL 400. It does not really matter which utility is used to create a file. Once it is created, all can use it. I guess you could say that all AS400 data files, excuse me, objects, are created equal. How democratic. Application programs are stored in the same file system and are also treated as objects. The command language function of the operating system, called CL, allows dynamic control of the database. Using CL, a programmer can create menus that allow execution of strings of commands with a single menu selection. This is also the facility used to perform ad hoc database queries using Query 400. Query 400 is a menu-driven query system that is quite powerful and flexible, although not particularly user-friendly. It takes some getting used to. The beauty of all this is it no longer takes sophisticated programs that take months to write to be useful to an end user on the AS400. What used to take months on an IBM mainframe with COBOL and DB2 can be developed in a few hours on the AS400. And this brings us to the AS400's one drawback. It's not a particularly good batch processor. You can indeed run batch programs on this machine, and in fact, most people do. But it's not the world's greatest data processor from a batch standpoint. And but most, most people, people don't care. They'll run batch on it anyway. Development is quick and much easier, and so what if it takes a little longer to process? Look at the money we've saved. Tuning becomes less of a hassle on an AS400. It can tune itself. Service becomes less of a hassle. It calls up IBM and reports itself when it's broken. Patching becomes less of a hassle. You can get patches applied over a dial-up phone line. In fact, the two biggest headaches are backing it up and upgrading it to a new release of the operating system or installing a layered software package. That is, once you get it running. Like every other machine in the IBM world, connecting them together can be quite a challenge. Just like in real estate where the three most important things are location, location, and location, in IBM communications, the three most important things are configuration, configuration, and configuration. It's very important to have things defined correctly with the right exchange IDs, polling addresses, transaction program names, and the like. Setting it up is the hardest part and where most people make the most mistakes. Take advantage of coding guides, screen to configuration file matching tools, and the like to ensure that this all-important step is taken care of. This will make or break you at a customer account. Well, enough about the machine. Let's talk about SNAPS and how we fit in. As you heard on slide one, SNAPS for the AS400 adds two important features to the product line. One, a 525X terminal emulator, and two, a printing architecture that basically marries AS400-based printing to Apple laser writers. First, let's take apart the emulator. It sits on top of the SNAPS 3270 API. You'll find this operates a lot like a 3270 emulator with a connections dialog and the like. Keyboard mapping works similar too, except that the 525X device uses different keys than a 3270. As mentioned on side one, the usual features are here. Drag and drop keyboard remapping, tear off keypads, auto keys recording and playback function, and the ability to get more than one terminal session going on a single Macintosh screen. Okay, so how does all this work? Just like in SNAPS 3270, there is a gateway machine on the network 
with an Apple Talk connection of some type, either Local Talk, Ether Talk, or Token Talk, and a new bus card supporting either serial or token ring connections to the AS400. For both terminal emulation and printing, we use LU62 connections to the AS400. Inside the AS400, we are using a feature called Display Station Pass-Through to support the terminal emulator. Display Station Pass-Through is a job running on the AS400. When a user attaches to this job using APPC, the AS400 creates a virtual terminal session for that user. APPC verbs are used as transport between the SNAPS gateway and the Display Station Pass-Through program running on the AS400. Now there's one new thing that you should note here which we discussed on side one of this tape. We used to grant a license based on the number of logical units a customer used in increments of 8, 32, and 64. You can think of a logical unit as a terminal emulation window in the 3270 environment. This changes with the AS400. Using LU62 sessions, we can now support a number of terminal emulator sessions using the same logical unit. Therefore, we're now counting the number of physical Macintoshes connected to the gateway instead of logical units. Snaps for the AS400 comes in 10, 35, and 70 user gateways. There's also a single user configuration called Snaps 5250. It provides a single user with as many terminal emulation sessions as they have memory for, as well as providing that single user with printer support. Okay, let's talk printing. We still need a gateway to connect to the AS400, just like the terminal emulator. But now we need something more. One more Macintosh on the network must play print server. In its chooser resides the name of the laser writer we want to print on. It's mapped to some horrible name for a printer that the AS400 systems administrations person thought up. So every time someone prints to that horrible name, the AS400 routes the job to the gateway, which routes it to the print server, which routes it to the laser writer, and away we go. We use APPC again. It's a similar feature to display station pass-through, but it doesn't have a formal name. I guess you could call it printer station pass-through because the concept is essentially the same. And this brings us to an important point. The gateway, print server, and terminal emulators can all run on the same machine. In fact, that in essence is what's going on with the SNAPS 5250 standalone configuration. To distribute these terminal emulation and printing sessions on the network, SNAPS requires the use of the 10, 35, or 70 user gateway. Once again, the most important thing to make sure of here is that all of your parameters between the AS400 and the gateway match perfectly. Otherwise, things flat out won't work or will work very strangely. Look for configuration tools to help you as we get closer to product release. Thanks, Richard. On this audio, we've looked at the internals of the AS400, the architecture and operational characteristics of the SNAPS for AS400 product offering, and we've discussed the importance of the configuration information that has to be entered on the gateway in order for it to talk to the AS400. You'll be seeing more information coming out on these products as we get closer to shipping them. Thanks for listening, and have a good day.